today we are going to discuss something of much greater significance as i had mentioned last time briefly writing device drivers has not been an integral part of our coursework in the degree colleges it is sadly so even in iit so whenever people have to write device drivers typically when they are doing their final year project or masters research or phd then they figure it out themselves now increasingly in the embedded system where much of the functionality will depend upon the peripherals that you can attach to your basic design board it becomes mandatory that you are able to write good device drivers and good is important because device drivers often define issues like performance issues like uh, stability and so on so i am very happy to once again welcome nitin nitin has come all the way from pune as you know last time he has now two of his new colleagues are not rather new for him but new for us one is anshul he did his masters from uh, iit kanpur and has worked on the operating system for smart cars with professor rajat muna who is currently the director general of cdat uh, he works with them and we have devesh who did his computer science from bhuit they both work closely in the nitish team on issues related to device driver and of course related stuff by the way when i say device drivers i must make one point clear i think i had mentioned it earlier this separation of expertise that that person is hardware this is software that fellow writes device drivers that fellow works on something else etc etc is extremely artificial and very dangerous so that is something we emphasize very strongly in iit system i would like you to carry that you would have understood it but would not have imbibed it into you in the sense that since you study specific syllabus and and give exams for specific subjects you tend to believe that that's all you ought to know which is completely incorrect as you would have felt in the internship itself there is no problem which is bounded by this discipline or that discipline so whatever is required to solve a problem you have to study it so happens that device drivers good device drivers have to be written you all have to learn to write device drivers. attending lectures is merely the beginning of any learning so you should figure out some assignment for actually writing some device drivers specific device drivers for interfacing device it doesn't matter whether you take a device to be interfaced through a usb to a microcontroller it doesn't matter what you interface with. but writing device drivers you have to dirty your hands by reading somebody's code you cannot become an expert program similarly by listening to how to write device drivers and reading somebody else's code you don't become expert device driver right so i'll stop here nitin all your sentences i guess uh, i'm devesh uh, i'm uh, working like i have a work except around 11 years uh, worked on file systems and uh, linux <coughs> block layers and uh, device drivers and uh, <coughs> device drivers uh, and then like we are with the einstein uh, technologies for a uh, couple of years i am working on a different kind of block uh, different kind of device drivers uh, mainly on the embedded systems so uh, first part uh, what i am we are going to cover is that uh, before going into the uh, how to write a device drivers and uh, we we are basically will introduce you to the environment that what kind of environment basically you need before uh, for a embedded like on this board like this is the board so on this board this is the board so for this board if you want to write up some particular device uh, driver for so here you have a lot of uh, lot many connectors like can see that you have a, a ethernet port and then we have a serial connector so if you connect any device any new hardware to this particular board so operating system running on this board should have that particular device driver right so we are uh, going to first cover that how to basically create the environment in which you can develop the device drivers then we will come to the part that how we can uh, through the kernel and uh, interaction of the hardware device drivers so this is a beagle board so uh, first you need 
a hardware board and then what you need is that some kind of uh, operating environment like some operating system that need to be ported on that particular board so operating system has one one part as you must be knowing that it is a software part and then there is a architecture part so like if you are porting any operating system on a, any new hardware so you have to basically port change its architecture part to as per the new hardware specification and then you can basically run your operating system on the any given uh, board or any given uh, new hardware so the first part is that you have to basically create a you port your operating system on a new board and then you if you want to write any new drivers so then you have to write new drivers as per the hardware and uh, hardware specifications and then and for before that you have to basically then there is a uh, issue comes that how to compile that drivers and then at last you want to test your drivers so you have to run your operating system and then load your modules and uh, test it so nowadays like almost every operating system does provide a mechanism that you, you have a loadable kernel modules so you don't have to basically build your kernel every time you have a loadable kernel modules run time you can load it and then you can unload it as well only thing is that you have to be a little bit careful about releasing the resources of the operating system which you use because generally the kernel drivers runs into the privilege mode so so this is uh, basically the beagle board beagle board is basically a open source hardware it is mainly for the uh, students and uh, can they can use it for their experimental purposes and uh, it was basically introduced by texas instrument and dziki it has uh, arm architecture uh, you guys have heard about arm right okay so so it is arm architecture and uh, mainly for learning purposes it is being used and uh, so this is about the beagle board do you have uh, any questions about the beagle board or something okay we are good so on a board you initially any any company which provides you a platform like a board so it will burn some its initial images into the rom okay and from so now that will basically use for your initial boot up after that whatever kernel with linux with android or any any uh, kernel or any operating system you want so you have to basically write your loader and then so so you have a loader which loads u boot so we have like we are coming there's a bootloader mlo so this is this is basically loads your u boot u boot is and uh, then u boot u boot is for operating system so operating well loading the operating system you need you need some kind of environment or you need to some kind of pass some argument to the kernel that load with let's assume that you have a <coughs> like you want to set baud rates or you want to set uh, baud rate you are you are aware about that right so like kernel you want to set that okay what is the baud rate of uh, kernel should use basically to communicate so through u boot you can do that and then u image is basically the micro image of the kernel the kernel any kernel it can be linux android previsd or anything and then there is a root fs root fs is basically the operating system requires this root fs where you have all 
your binaries placed. So, like on Linux machine, if you type some any command, right, ls, so that binary is in the root fs. Similarly, so root fs is basically required for kernel to is kernel per se doesn't require the root fs, but for you for user to use that particular kernel or particular operating system, then you require root fs. So these are uh, basically. Uh, for Android, for Beagle board, you can take this U image and root FS from the free electron uh, side. And then for uh, basically, uh, if you go back, so it is so MLO, MLO and U boot, you take it from the Beagle board side itself. And U image and root FS, you can take it from the free electron. Uh, site. So they they have uh, like documented very well. It is uh, there that how to build your kernel, and then uh, how to basically build your root fs, then how to build uh, basically your and on Beagle board they provide basic MLO and U boot. So some U boot settings you require to change. Uh, right now, unfortunately, it is uh, we don't have a connector, so we can't. I can't show you right now. Nathan is working on that. Probably at the end we will have a demo that uh, how to basically load the kernel and compile it. Like we have a compiled kernel, but we want to load it and show you that what is the U boot prompts looks like, and then what is the kernel prompt look like. What it is. Nathan is working on that. Hopefully, we'll. At the end of the session, hopefully will. So, yeah. So compilation requires like so you have a operating system x86, which is uh, x86 uh, machine, and you have a Linux box, Linux running on top of that machine. Now, you have a another board which is uh, ARM. Basically, this architecture is ARM, ARM based, and it doesn't have anything right now. No kernel, not no operating environment. So you we you want to build your initial kernel and everything for this particular board. So what you require? So you require a tool chain, the compile tool chain. You heard about like cross compilation and all? You guys? Okay. So <coughs> then you build your tool chains and then using those tool chains. So that particular like your GCC will create a binaries for ARM specific. Still, it is running on the x86 box, but if you build any binary, it will create a binary for ARM, ARM market, ARM hardware. So that is this is why we require tool chain. And then using this tool chain, you can if you have ported your kernel, you have changed the architecture part of the kernel. Then you can compile your kernel, and this will give you the U image. Then, similarly, like you, you need to build all your uh, user utilities, and that is root fs. And uh, then, this board basically you have SD card. So, in this card, basically, this is the card. Here you burn your bootloader. MLO, then you burn your uh, U image, and then you burn your uh, you you boot. Uh, sorry, just a minute. Oh. So this is the order basically. This is, you need to burn the ML. So this is the order basically. You burn on this particular SD card. So there should be MLO first. So the built-in loader on this card will. Look at the first sector of the this uh, SD card, and it assumes that there is a loader over there. If loader is there, it will load that particular. It will start running load that MLO. So MLO is supposed to be on the first sector of the SD card. Then MLO is programmed such that it will load U boot. U boot <laughs> U boot is something where you can set your parameters that. Kernel 
you want to set baud rate you want to set consoles uh, like pass the argument to the console so anything you can use uh, u boot for that then u boot is program to load your kernel so your kernel can a starting like a starting point of the kernel is let's assume that 8000 or any memory address x so your u boot will load your kernel and then makes your make cpu to jump on that particular address and it will kernel will start booting up and finally the kernel when kernel initial part is has been started then it looks for root fs so that you can user can get a prompt so is that part that part clear right that how basically the on this particular sd card how uh, it is the images get loaded so then uh, so this this is the setting up till now you have kernel image loaded now you you want to write a particular driver and you want to cross compile it the driver for arm and then you want to basically load that driver so what you do is that you have created the tool chain so on on your machine where you are compiling your kernel and creating root fs there itself you basically include that particular tool chain in your path so the first expression is export path and this is your cross compiled compilation tool chain it will come into the path then uh, there is a cross compile flag if you look at into the linux android is basically linux based operating system so if you look at the main make file of the linux there you will see that there is a cross it has been used the cross compile flag is used so and then you say that you want to compile it for arc equal to arm so like when you cross compile so generally if you compile your program on x86 box so you do like gcc and then your programs but your cross so here here will be your like anything main dot c or something but if you are compiling same program for arm so it will be something arm and like some prefix so you basically set this part as a cross compile cross compile in the flag so whatever prefix you have created a tool chain if you look at the uh, list down the tool chain you will see that this is the before gcc before assembler before loader everything this this prefix will be there so this is the this prefix you want to set it into the your cross compile uh, flag and then you export and say that you want to compile it for arm and then then you want to so this is your basically environment setup for the compiling a module and then you this is the make file so you you are aware about make utility right so in on the command prompt you can write this gcc something like gcc and then you can give your uh, this files name your program but for a larger large when you are you have hundreds of files so you do not want to write or you do not want to compile every uh, file by yourself manually and so you write a make files for that make file is basically <laughs> utility to make your prog uh, executable so in make file like this is a typical example of a make file the how to so you have extra c flags where you can say that okay the kernel always define some of the c flags against which the kernel module will be compiled but you can add your own extra c flags so this is the extra c flags this is the standard keyword and then you can pass that minus g option you want, you want to include symbols in your uh, binary then you want to use optimization level 2 for compiling your program then any any your program needs 
if any other variable you can define minus d and then your flag. Then you write this obj minus obj hyphen m. So, this is the keyword basically, this is how it assumes that and there whatever name you give name dot o. So, if you run this make, make file it will create a module name dot ko, ko is basically kernel object. So, kernel object will be created and this name dot o can be less make of made of lot of files. So, how do you specify that which files this particular you need to compile. So, there you say that name and obj's and then you provide a list of like a space separated list of files. Then against which kernel you want to compile your module. This you provide that my this use this particular kernel source to compile this program. And then this pwd like present working directory where you want to basically create your object files. This make will create lot of objects files. If you want to create it on some temporary space or anywhere you can use uh, this variable and then then you provide default default is the action basically and then you say that and it you run it it will create your object files you can provide a clean option like you want to just delete all the dot o files you can provide a clean option for that so now you have created your module you have compiled your module now you want to burn like the order in which I told you earlier that you need to burn first MLO, then you need to burn U boot, then and you have compiled your, your, your own kernel module, you want to put that particular kernel module in root fs in some, some directory and then you burn your U image, burn your root fs, load, load the, and then uh, put this particular SD card into the Beagle board, this will boot your kernel and you can you can con load then your kernel module that is insmod is a utility which loads the kernel module into the uh, kernel and rmod is a utility using that you can basically remove your kernel module. So, I just summing up that what whatever I told you that we we need to basically first like create a cross, cross compiler cross compilation tool chain then you require kernel source download it from the sites which I told you then there is a steps mentioned clearly on those uh, on, on the, that side you can basically build your kernel then you build kernel third step is basically you create your root of s and fourth is like if you are writing any new new device driver which is not there already in the kernel, Linux provides a lot of device driver and build device drivers are there, but if you have written any new particular device driver you basically need to build your kernel module. Against this particular uh, this particular kernel source and then you need to copy this kmod kernel module into root fs some directory in the root fs then you you have this is so this, this all is your kernel image and kernel module is ready now if there is a mlo is available on the beagle board side that is the you can use MLO 
burn it on the SD card. This MLO will is so using this MLO you can load your it you load your basically U boot. U boot is again being used to load your kernel image. On U boot prompt, it gives you a prompt basically. There you can uh, there is a lot of environment variables. If you type print env, it will show you that uh, what all parameters you can set. So there is print env, and you can set any environment variable using set env, and then you can basically save env. But this is all three commands are there. So, but the save env writes be very careful when you are saving particular any environment variable. That may that may basically cause your board not to boot. So, take a copy whatever default parameters are there you save it into some other parameter like if you do the print env you will see that there is a some it will show you that there is a boot arg so this is a kernel boot argument it will have console something then you have baud rate some like set to 115200 or something like that the stop bit and so if you want to change this the recommended way is that you do that set env and uh, name any boot or old and you save it whatever your boot are your current current boot are so you take a backup of your this current boot arc and then set your new one if you change directly this it will change your basically the it so what i was saying is that there is this there is print env then you have set env and you have save env these are the three commands using which you can change the u boot parameters uh, yeah u boot parameters print env will list down whole lot of whatever whatever parameters are there in the u boot so it will show you the print env set env you can use to change a given uh, parameter or set your create your own new u boot parameter and save env will save that particular on the nand flash of this card so once that is saved the older one is go gone so so that what i was saying is that you need to take a backup whatever current so like you can write something like boot or old so old is your uh, new uh, new argument new and whatever the current value is you can save it into the boot arg old and then you can change then you do the change boot arg so this is this way you basically set up your environment after that you if you type on the u boot prompt the boot it will start loading your kernel the kernel which you have burned into the sd card then like it will give you whatever you have saved in your root fs you can go and see using like you do cd then you basically go wherever on the root fs you have saved your kernel uh, module you change to that particular directory and then you can list and then you can do something like ins mod
and this will load your kernel uh, module. And to remove the kernel module, you can use. Okay. And in module, basically, you have a routines. That is, you tell kernel that whenever you load the module, you have a init function. So kernel is going to run your init function first. The minute you load the module, there is an init function that will be executed. And when you unload the module, so there is an exit function. So there is a format of writing a kernel modules and then you can specify tell kernel that this is my init function, this is my exit function and after that whatever logic you want to implement in the kernel module as per. So during, so there will be a init function and there will be a exit function in your module. In exit basically you do the all the cleanup, in init you do the initialization, whatever initialization is there required, you do the initialization the init part. Okay. So we have got just the raw board. Now uh, our goal is to develop a driver, right? We, have, we want to write a device driver, but these device drivers, I mean they, you cannot, uh, you know, develop them independently. You require some kernel, some OS, right? Say you are on Linux or you are on Windows. So Windows, it has upper layer of OS and it has a layer I mean the, which accesses the hardware. So the layer which accesses the hardware, we call them hardware drivers or the device drivers, driver for device. So our initial goal is to set up the, you know, this environment, prepare this kernel so that I mean we can write the device driver. So, so as you mentioned, you know, when you buy this board, it is just plain board, it has nothing, the few things are in this, it expects. Uh, it expects, you know, so when you want to boot a kernel, it expects that you keep a boot loader at the first sector of SD card. And if you give it to him, then it has a program in its ROM, it can boot that thing automatically. Okay. So first thing you require MLO, because it will not understand anything else. Got it? Uh, then, okay, so what you write in MLO? So thing which loads MLO is pre-written into this. Okay. That's not our worry, but you provide MLO, and it comes with this. I mean, when you buy this Beagle board, or you can download them online. But these MLOs are very specific to the board, version of the board. You know, this is a C3 board, so or, or rather this is a C1 board. So MLO will be specific to C1 because whatever is programmed into this, that should understand that MLO, right? So that's very much specific to the version of the board. Now, so okay, we have got MLO, and now what? Now we want to load the kernel, but kernel requires certain parameters. So what is its load address? You know, all those things, and then say terminal settings, baud rate, as Devish mentioned, uh, all these things it requires. But these things, you know, so there should be something which will allow us to set up these parameters. So that thing is U boot. You see the second thing. So then MLO expects MLO is written in such a way that it will load this. I mean U boot. So when you load U boot, you will come, you will see a prompt like you know, dollar or hash. You sh see in uh, shell prompt of Linux. So there you have certain commands. Those commands are very standard. You know, so you want I want to set the boot arguments. I want to set the terminal settings. Those are command. Those all commands are very you know, standard, and you can I mean uh, change those commands depending on your need. So you want to I, I want to change my boot my kernel load address from say 8000 to 9000 for whatever reasons so we'll change those addresses okay then once you have you know decided these boot parameters have set these boot parameters so we save them so as he mentioned you know we do print these these all commands are for u boot this one print tn we will list down all the commands okay all the options set set env is for setting it. So now you want to set the load address. Load address is say suppose it is 8000, I want to set it to 9000. But be careful as he said because these things are not saved in your SD card anyway, it, it will be saved in this, right. So on NAND flash. So once you save it, you cannot get it back. So either preserve whatever the previous values were and then uh, you know 
basically change it, so that you can always revert back. And then you do save env, save env will save it into the flash. And then again, now you want to, so now you have set the boot parameters, now you want to load the kernel, how will you load the, so what is the kernel, it is like simple OS, you know. So as you mentioned Android, Android is, Android is mainly based on Linux only, so most of the part is taken from Linux kernel, but because they wanted it to port for mobile platforms, so they have pushed in the changes which are required for mobile platforms, so such as you know, because power consumption is very important for mobiles, so that part is you know changed heavily, Bluetooth component and uh, uh, this fl flash file system, because general desktop systems you have hard disks right, but mobiles you have flash disks, so you require a very you know specific file system which is very well performing, so all those changes have gone into Android, so that is why we have now we want to develop something for mobile, we have chosen to you know port Android on this, now we will port Android, so Android is our kernel, it is OS but I mean, so kernel is the micro you know it is, so you know, you are aware what is kernel, no, yes, uh, you know it is minimal set of uh, operations provided by the OS you know, so OS could be segregated into say user level programs, applications, but kernel is you know whatever is privileged, so that part is is called kernel, it is like you know kernel of some fruit, it is very essential, very minimal you know, so these things are, so that kernel we, I mean so android we have compiled android, so why do you require compilation I mean. Uh, ARM, so the compile it for cross compile to compile it for some other architecture. So that's why you require cross compilation. So by doing this cross compilation, we have uh, got our Android for ARM. Okay. Now we will. So steps are clear, right? So first we'll put MLO, and this order is very important. I mean, how do you copy? First we have to copy MLO in SD card. Where is this SD card? We require MLO, U-boot, U-image, and root FS. Why do we require MLO at first, right? As I explained, because it this card expects MLO to be at the first sector of SD card. So if you copy, say, U image first, it will treat your U image as MLO, and it will not work. So that's why you copy MLO. So MLO will be loaded by pre-written thing. Then MLO will load U boot, U boot will load U image, and U image will use root FS. So that's why this order is maintained. And uh, once you have uh, this, U image ready. U image, uh, you have cross compiled everything. You have cross compiled everything. So by cross compilation, you will get this. Okay. And so after you, you know, basically execute the steps properly. And these sites are, you know, very much explanatory. You go to them, and they'll explain you. I mean, why they are doing it. And so here in this blog, I mean. In general, we this site is very good for you know, I mean, for embedded resources, free electrons. You'll get I mean, a lot of good resources here. And Beagle Board, I mean, about Beagle Board, if you want to read on, I mean, there is a BeagleBoard.org. So, this board is you know, it's quite heavily, extensively used in, in universities. And uh, you know, generally, I mean, so whenever they develop it, they generally, uh, whenever they come up with a new board, they'll go to the Stanford or somewhere. And they will demonstrate that we have come up with a new board. So you, you can expect, I mean, why this board is so much popular? Because low cost and uh, you know it's very uh, resources are very much available. So initially, if you see now, you know we call it Beagle board is open source hardware. You must have noticed, you know, when open source software you have heard. But why this open source hardware? Because you know to access any hardware uh, board, you require you know, it's a specification. So suppose I want to access the NAND flash. So what is the register in which I write? Then it will pass on the, that value to uh, this thing, NAND flash. So all those register specification I require, right? I need to know. I mean, how this hardware is organized. I need to know the specification for it, data sheet of it. So if you buy proprietary hardware, I mean, you you can only you, you'll not get. I mean, so if I say tomorrow I go to market and I buy, I buy say LSI controller, 
LSI hard disk controller. So, I cannot get its specific specification for free. So, that is why those hardware becomes very costly. But for this Beagle board, I mean they have made all these specification, all these data sheets free. So, you can go to and you can download data sheets for this. That is why they are called open source hardware. So, we have got this board, we have prepared this, right. Prepared this means, I mean if you do these all these steps, you will get your kernel loaded into this. And now, why do we require this loadable kernel module? So, are you aware of what is what are kernel modules? When you compile a kernel, you know it offers certain uh, facilities or certain services, right. But now, kernel compilation is a long process, you know. It is like if you compile a kernel, it will take one hour, one and a half hour, depending on the kernel. Now, if you want to say build a driver for whatever NAND flash, then imagine your development process will become very huge if every time you will have to compile a kernel, right. Because while decoding, you keep facing bugs, right, ok. So, oh, I miss this, I will change this. But every time if you have to compile and test, it will take one and a half hour, right. This is so loadable kernel modules are you know, you compile a separate entity, we call it a module, and that module interacts with the kernel. So, kernel provides a method. So, by which you can insert that module in kernel. So, it, it makes your development easy, you know. There are certain other sides to it also, but I will stick to this thing only. Why do we require this kernel module? So, to make our development easy, we are we require these loadable kernel modules. Now, these loadable kernel modules are, so how do you load as he mentioned uh, using this uh, ins mod utility ins mod, it is provided by kernel only. When you say ins mod, say my module dot ko. So, it will load your module and whatever your module is expect to do, it will do. So, there is a certain format, I mean how do you write a module. Very popular, I mean you can search for any, how do you write simple hello world module. So, suppose my intended module just prints hello world when I load it and when I clean it, sorry when I remove it, it says goodbye. That is, it is you know designated job. So, when I when I do ins mod my module dot ko, it will just print hello world. When I will say rm mod my module dot ko, it will print goodbye. So, these, so, so this is a simple model, but suppose I mean I have written my uh, you know this USB driver module for this particular card as a loadable kernel module. So, if I say ins mod USB driver dot ko, after I have read, after I have you know loaded my Android and everything. So, you will see the you will see the hash prompt like you, know, you have seen in this Linux shell. So, you will compile your module separately and ins mod USB driver dot ko. If everything is fine, you have written your driver correctly, you will I mean you will see that you can access your USB devices. So, it you know it shortens your process otherwise every time you have to compile the whole kernel you might not be able to appreciate right now, but just try to compile a kernel once and it will take one and one hour, two hours and if you have to compile tool chains another four hours one. So, I mean compile in morning, come in evening, it is like that. So, that is why I require these modules. So, we have not really gone into writing drivers, you know how to write a driver, that is next session, but preparing this environment is very much necessary, otherwise you cannot, I mean otherwise how do we write a dri driver. These are all you know just understand them like concepts, I mean do not try to remember like steps you know if you try to go on remembering like a steps you will forget, you will just every time you go and search, but try thinking why these why we are doing these things and same is for writing device driver. As Professor Patak mentioned I mean we do not really uh, you know write device driver when we are in colleges I and mean, I did not do it also, I also did when I joined my company, but it is if you think logical steps what we are doing you know. I mean next presentation also we have kept like this only, I have not really touched you know these, I mean you know I take a disk driver or anything, but if you understand those steps, you will be able to write any driver for any OS. OS could be you know whether be it FreeBSD or say Linux or you know Android whatever and for any architecture also, architecture is say x86 ARM, because general concepts are same with the environment with the requirement they 
you know you can how to apply them that thing changes but once you understand those things so i mean you should be initially it looks like i mean it's scary i mean it's i mean why why are they doing i mean so many things but just try to understand i mean each step once at a time and why do you require it it's very easy to you know figure out when by what setting and it'll easily uh, easy to debug also so suppose okay i met you boot but, but my kernel is not getting loaded so okay so till this point everything is correct you know how do you debug logically right till this point okay this thing is working now it's not working but if you just try to you know cram them as a set of steps it will tend to you know uh, get overcome by it so just try to understand you know why are we doing these steps these commands and all these things will easily you can easily find anywhere just google it and you'll get it these are standard just try to understand why are we doing these things and same is you know for uh hardware writing also so before that i mean how we are comfortable with os operating system concepts like synchronization locking locks you know so these things i require you know uh, memory management i'll no okay i'll cover in brief detail i mean why do we require these things Thank you.